International Women's Day started in 1909 to commemorate a textile strike that never actually happened. But despite its apocryphal origins, the celebration has spread over the entire world over the last century. In some places, it's just a hybrid of Mother's Day and Valentine's Day, but for most of us, it's a day about women forcing their way into the political and economic arena, or at least continuing to try. So this week, I thought we'd take an international tour and see how the day was being commemorated in different parts of the world. We'll start in China, where the national government decided to recognize some of their most prominent warriors for women's rights by inviting them to jail. That's right, no fewer than 10 of China's most well-known agitators for women's rights were rounded up during a March 8th crackdown on dissidents, who were targeted for handing out pamphlets to raise awareness for sexual harassment. It's worth noting that even though International Women's Day has always been more popular in communist countries, the state of women's rights in China is abhorrent. Most job openings still advertise that they're looking for men only, and when women are allowed to apply, it's usually with bizarre chauvinistic stipulations like applicants must be demure and very graceful. But in Taiwan, they opted not to spend the day arresting women, so much as publicly fat-shaming them. For some reason, the Taiwanese government chooses March 8th to release its annual report on how chunky the ladies are getting. According to the Department of Health, a frightening 33.6% of women exceed the recommended waistline of 80 centimeters, or about 31 and a half inches. And if being told you're too fat isn't enough, they would also be happy to show you that you're too fat through a bunch of government-sponsored waistline measuring events where you can find out if you're exceeding the recommended muffin top allowance. Interesting, but not surprising, that Taiwan doesn't even publish similar numbers for men, nor do they issue municipal proclamations about how many vegetables men should eat, nor how many minutes of a day they should walk. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against governments offering sound advice on keeping in shape, but if you reduce the metric of women's health to the size of their waistline, it's not because of your genuine concern for their well-being. Come on. And finally, we'll move to Afghanistan to give some props to a very badass and Afghani artist, Kubra Kadimi, who is such a warrior for women's rights that she needs a suit of armor. After paying a local blacksmith to fashion some plate mail with exaggerated boobs and ass, she took to the streets of Kabul in a silent protest of ever-present groping and harassment throughout the city. And as it turns out, groping is only the first level of misogyny in Afghanistan, because very quickly the suit of armor became functional when the assholes in the crowd started hurling rocks at her. Since the protest, Kadimi has gone into hiding after receiving a series of death threats. That's right, death threats. For daring to not have her tits fondled by strangers. Can you imagine? And as fucked up as all of that is, I do want to throw some major support behind a dozen or so men that took to the street and burkas in a show of solidarity with Kadimi. So yes, there are plenty of victories to commemorate through the first 106 International Women's Days, but it looks like there's at least 106 years more worth of fighting to do. And on that depressing point, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.